Welcome back, guys, to the Tonkahawk Studio. This Hi. is Razia. And this is Iman. I mean, it's nice. And we're back after a long time, but we're yes. back to talk about our really cool movie preview over here. Yes. Everything, <laughs> everywhere, all at once. Um, we just saw it in theaters. We did see it. We saw it together. Yeah, and um, we have a lot of thoughts, and we're really excited and impressed by the movie. Good. So we're bringing it back with, you know, our old school review days. I know. I was literally, I was telling Razia the other day, I was like, I miss our like review video our po- not videos podcast like if you guys are an og listener you knew um, at the time we were like posting once a week i don't know how again i don't know yeah, how we did that a different podcast it's, uh, it's a different time <laughs> we're almost coming up to our 50th anniversary guys oh my yeah so Whoa. there's that but um <laughs> yeah I, I was saying like we we missed i at least i missed doing my own super yeah but i missed <laughs> doing these and i was i was like i know we got tired over the years um, and I was like, we should do this again, you know, just a yeah. little chit-chat podcast. Exactly. Um, and we really wanted to talk about this movie. Now, I knew nothing <laughs> about this movie, okay? Razia was like, oh, should we go see this? And I was like, okay, yeah, I heard it's really good. Like, I've seen, um, like, TikTok reviews, not necessarily reviews, but just people going like, I saw, yeah. and I was like, okay, that's good. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to go see it. Um, and I knew nothing, nothing, nothing. And you knew, yeah. like, about the movie. No, you know, all of Twitter and, like, you, just like you, all of social media was just like, this is the best movie of the year, hands down. Yeah. Maybe in the past couple of years, it's, like, the best example of, like, modern cinema. Like, And, yeah, and everybody talking about how emotional you'll get um, at a certain point in the movie. So, that yeah. it was, like, enough of a... And, like, also I've seen enough of the trailer and, like, the visuals that I knew. I was like, okay, this is my kind of movie. I'm, I'm ready to be in my field and, like, cry <laughs> forever. Um... But also, like, just, like, the actors, everything sold me on it, so. Yeah. Um, I didn't even see the trailer. I literally saw nothing. Yeah. Only heard of the name and heard that it was really good. I didn't even know who the cast, like, I had a barely any idea of what who the cast was, yeah. anything. Um, and I was like, when he said, you want to go watch it? I was like, yeah, I've been wanting to see that. And I was like, I, um, and then on purpose, by that point, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to look it up. Mm-hmm. I want to go into this, like, yeah. with fresh eyes knowing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm really glad I did. Yeah. Because, wow. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I was. I was. Wow. I was wondering. Like, okay, yeah. I think for both of us, like, it was. Okay, we'll get. We'll get straight into our. Like, Let's review. say now that we're doing our best to do a non-spoiler <laughs> version. If we get to the point where we feel like we're gonna spoil, we'll let you guys know, and then yeah. you guys can stop if you haven't seen the movie because it's still relatively new, and I, I feel like that would be so rude. We're gonna try <laughs> our best, okay? Because I feel like we can talk about it without spoiling the film, like. Like, yeah. spoiling the plot of the film. We'll do, we'll do the best yeah. we can. And um, I, I guess I'll go first with my overall thoughts yeah. and my rating. So I gave this movie a 9 out of 10. Um, I think, for me, it satisfied so many buckets. Like, the yeah. acting was on point. The music was incredible. The visuals. I think both of us, as video editors, went, yeah. oh my god, what a bitch to edit. Like, this is intense. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know how they did that. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things. I was like, oh, I can't imagine how many times they had to record that. Anyways. Um, yeah, it, it just on so many levels was wonderful and the plot because it doesn't necessarily follow a regular narrative I wasn't busy in my head thinking oh what's coming next like I for once and you know it's a good movie when it does this when it lets you like you have to let go yeah to just be like okay I'm on for the ride you're really listening to every yeah. word um, there's different parts in the movie that are uh, you'll remember that are silenced out so then you kind of left and like really just be present like it's yeah. such a weird experience yeah that doesn't happen often in, no. in like film yeah yeah and like it's i think it's really relatable the story is like or, or i guess more generally around family but there's so many like different aspects of identity and culture and you know when you're overwhelmed in life and wondering about the decisions you made or what if you know the questions of what if in your head that you think about in your career you know relationship decisions so i i it addresses so much that I feel like everybody in the theater, and I should mention that when we went, we went kind of in a very empty theater. Oh, it was great. No, it was great. I love I'm that. Okay, I'm not. I'm I, like... I love having an empty theater. It's like, I got the private theater to myself. Yeah, so it, it was an empty theater, so like there wasn't yeah. a lot of people reacting right yeah. <laughs> you kind of feel like you're just by yourself and it's yeah it's which, which i like yeah i'm never going to complain about an empty theater but it, it's one of those things that i feel like if you were in a much more like compact theater it would have felt like almost like how you do with avengers movies where you can audibly hear people laugh it's a song yeah. and gasp and like you know mm-hmm. like i felt it would have been a far more like interactive experience um but yeah i, I just think this movie accomplished so much in what is a really complex plot to handle and yeah. a lot of characters 
but gracefully. There's no point that I'm, I'm even thinking about the logic of it because I'm just so invested in like how wonderful everything. Yeah, it just like really like sucks you into the storyline. And like I was telling Razia after the movie, I was like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, it's kind of like a non-linear linear storyline. Mm -hmm. Like the way they filmed it makes it feel non-linear, but at the same time, it tells a very linear storyline very beautifully. Right. Um, but it doesn't feel like monotonous. It doesn't yeah. feel like you're like waiting for something. No, it's like every second of the movie, you're like. It's also not telling you uh, yeah, exactly. It's not yeah. also beating you over the head with like a message either of like you exactly. should be doing this. You should think this. It's kind of you're very much witnessing this main character feel these emotions and go through these things. Yes. And then, yeah, it just it unravels as it does. But it all feels very natural. Like that's such a hard thing to accomplish, especially with dialogue. Like all mm -hmm. of it is just like yes, though these characters would interact like this. Yeah, I think that like and I I think that like at the at, like as you come to the end of the film you kind of get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the message is there. But like you said, it's not like from the beginning they're, like, pushing this specific message. Yeah. It kind of, like, carries you along. Mm -hmm. um, and then by the end of it, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Isn't this wonderful, this thing? Yeah. Like? yeah. <laughs> they're like, it's, and it takes you through so many emotions, guys. Like, <laughs> it was so funny because, like, uh, Razia is, okay, so we went to this theater in Whitby. So if you guys know, um, Whitby's kind of, like, farther east. Um, yeah. Uh, east of Toronto. And it was it's called landmark cinemas and like we don't i we specifically went there because i was like we wanted to check it out the theater is known to be really nice and if you know if you live in the gta and you know like cineplex theaters um they have like vip now and like you can get the vip experience with like the recliner seats although not all theaters have them um and then but you pay like more yeah but landmark is like pretty regular theater prices and you still get that experience so we, I mean, we were like we have to check it out and luckily it was like a thursday evening no one was there mm -hmm. But, um, so me and I made sure to get, like, seats all the way at the back because I'm a short person and I need to not be blocked by people. Um, <laughs> and so we were sitting and, like, I think there was a couple to my right. Yeah. Um, but there was no one to, like, Razia's left. And then there was, like, no one except for, like, maybe someone in the middle. Uh, yeah, like, four or five rows down. Yeah. yeah. And then, so I just remember, like, <laughs> like, we're laughing. Everybody's, like, chuckling here and there. And then there's parts in the movie that get, like, that really hit you. Yeah. That really hit you. And we'll talk about this later, about, like, the thematic about how it really... You know how I really yeah. feel that, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just <laughs> I was like I'm, I'm like I'm a sensitive person I will cry, mm -hmm. um, and I know Rosie you were tearing up you were tearing yeah, up no, I was, like, at so many points I know um, and I was like, like I love that but for some reason I couldn't get away from the fact that there was people to my right like I was it was very aware of there was people to my right and I was like if I start crying not that they're paying attention to me yeah but like for some reason I feel like I felt like you people were eyes like on eyes on me which they weren't um, but I was like Iman you will not cry you will like. Your eyes will burn, but you will not let a tear drop. <laughs> if I was alone or with just Roz, I would have been bawling. I, it was, yeah, they really get you in, yeah. in the feels. What would you say your overall rating of the movie is? Um, okay, see, I remember when I, we came up theater, I said 8.5, mm. but I ha like I marinated okay. with it, and I, okay. I would say 9 as well. <gasps> okay. Yeah, like, what I, changed? just, like, thinking about, I don't know, like, I feel like it's something when you first come out of a theater, mm -hmm. you're kind of overwhelmed with everything that happened. You haven't had a chance to, like, actually look back at what happened in the film, like, and actually think about it, like, stylistically, the storyline, you know, like, the costumes, and everything put together. Mm -hmm. Such a unique film. Yeah, like, so, so, unique. I, so unique. And I don't think that people understand, like, it's so, I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a there's a, a couple reasons as to why. Mm -hmm. um, that, And I think that, first of all, the like, the diversity of, the cast is a big reason as to why like we're seeing a different type of perspective we're seeing a different culture shown on screen that's not usually shown and i loved it mm -hmm. um and just like obviously like and also like the generational aspect to it right mm -hmm. like the family Excuse dynamics you, yeah. that you're yeah. seeing in the film like those perspectives you don't really get to see often um and i think not only that that's only like part of it as to why it made it so unique and then there's a the whole storyline there's the whole you know like yeah. multiverse and everything and it's like Crazy! I just I loved it <laughs> so much. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's yeah. The the right word is unique, and the thing is, I feel like the directors, because he's known as the Daniels or Daniels, they're yeah. both they share the first name. But it, they, basically, I know that they had this premise. They must have had this idea. But I love that they went at this, not being afraid to be weird, mm -hmm. because there's so many parts in this movie that, like, especially the very silent one, like yeah, like I and I walked into the theater telling Iman is like the. the it, this is very art housey, and for this mm -hmm. to be on like mainstream theaters and like for everybody to like be watching it and it's kind of 
in the know, like everyone knows about it. It's not a niche movie. That's crazy. Like this stuff is like a few yeah. years ago wouldn't have done as well. Mm-hmm. But I, I think part of why it, it delivered really well is like it wasn't afraid to like yeah. it just went head like head first into every weird montage or decision or a lot of weird moments. Weird, weird, yeah, <laughs> a lot of weird. Moments. <laughs> But it was like weird. Yeah. It was funny weird. And especially at the beginning of the movie, it like sets up this such eerie stage that like yeah. it is like almost borderline horror, but doesn't like fully really get yeah. into it. Like this play of genres that it it wasn't afraid. Like that's in it that read very clearly of like this is a a movie that is gonna just share you with what it has, and it's not gonna be like oh, but we have to be this kind of movie to attend to these audiences. Like no, no buckets need to be filled. They just no. create their own movie. And I think that like that shouldn't scare people from watching the film. No. Like I know that like this type of very like artsy, like different like dynamics and like you know super like extra like it's very extra but in a good way. And I, I know sometimes people don't resonate with that, right? Like they're like, oh, this is too like artsy for mm-hmm. me. But I don't think that should should scare people from seeing the movie. Like yeah. if anything, that should like make you want to see it even more. Um, because they do it in a way that's like so that's so well done. It doesn't it doesn't make you feel checked out. Because sometimes mm-hmm. if things are like over the top or like there's too much going on, you can check out of a film of a storyline, whatever. But I don't think that that's the case here. Um, and maybe we're coming from a like biased perspective, oh, just because like we resonate with the storyline. There's as well. so many and so many things in this movie that are, I think catered to us. <laughs> yeah, which is which is probably the case why like we really. So I think I, maybe if you can't connect with the storyline, maybe you'll have a different experience. But I feel like you should be able you to be able appreciate to things that you can't necessarily connect with too, right? Yeah. Um. So I don't know. It was just so well done, and then on top of that, we we've, we've only been talking about style style right now, yeah. like stylistic things. Yeah. Let's talk about the freaking actors and actresses yes. like the, the cast so good amazing so good. they did such yeah. a, the range their range. The range just like each character's range <sighs> within yeah. themselves yeah. like the, uh, the the amount of characters they play the because like i said like this and this is not a spoiler okay i went in not watching <laughs> but if you see the trailer you already know this is a multiverse <laughs> film yeah like yeah the range just the range of these and characters the, the challenge that this movie presents to them like i think the, going through just the main few characters, uh, I think it's Raymond is his her husband's name. I, yeah, I think he so. he. Oh my god! For I I think I was the most taken away, with the exception of Jamie Lee Curtis, really like taken oh, by his, his by his performance because amazing acting scenes that are actually really enthralling and really good if you're yeah. an action person. Yeah, you mean like the genre that I found both like quirky and funny, but then only you're like, oh shit, when like shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love obviously the main actress like. Watching her, it's just a, such a genuine, convincing, like, just depiction of a mother who really cares about mm-hmm. her her family. Yeah, like that, and it's kind of yeah, and it's kind of like burdened by that like immigrant life, like you know, yeah. coming to a new country and yeah, having to start all over again and like having all these responsibilities just like piled up on her. Yeah, and then exactly. you're in a multi, you know like multiverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you also, sympathize with her. Also, and it's, I, I also love how they portrayed like because she's of like an older generation and like there's something where she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are these words? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a bus. <laughs> all the funny bits about that were really good. Yeah. Um, and then the daughter, obviously, like it's it, I, all I think it. she was my favorite. Really? Like favorite character? In terms of like or the like the range of her acting. Oh, okay. Okay. I think she did a really good she job. A, she did a really good job. Yeah. I think she did, a, and then I think, like in terms of range of acting, I think um, second favorite would be her dad. Yeah, yeah. He, he was. I love him. It's hard not to like his job. character. That's why. Yeah. Um, but Jamie Lee Curtis, I think for oh, me, I, I I think this is her. Weirdly, this is her best role because I. We spent so long, first of all, trying to figure out who she was. <laughs> we were like, I recognize yeah, this woman. She's so well disguised. She, yeah, I was like, no, I know her. Yeah. And I was like, what is her name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when the credits came through, I was like, oh my god, she's Jimmy Lee Curtis. No, but she did such a good job. She, oh, just a really good villain. You just want yeah. to hate her. Yeah. And but also they oh. twisted on you too. <laughs> like, <laughs> her role, like, it's so, it's very interesting. It's so I love good. it. I it's so good. It. I, I did say, like, reading after. Uh, and, like the YouTube watching of interviews and stuff after mm-hmm. we watched the movie, and um, one thing I learned is that she put a lot of influence on how the character looks in like her, oh. her design. So like the cast is her decision. Oh, um, she everything wears, played so well. Yeah, like the beaded something. necklace with her glasses hanging oh, yeah. off. Like all of these things that are very much like that public service worker who hates their job. Like <laughs> yeah, it's just like so really. many things she like really ingrained. And I, I no point did I question her. Like she's 
Oh, it's just I thought she played that role so well and was a good motivator for one you wanting to support the main character because yeah. that that scene where they're well they're it's a, a scene in and around taxes and they're being audited and that's like a very stressful scene mm-hmm. and I I just love and there's a lot going on in that yeah, scene too yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love the tension in that because you're just paying attention the entire time yeah oh, but it's great it's really good what would you say Iman is like your favorite part of this movie because we talk about trying to pick favorite scene it's kind of impossible. Yeah, we don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, no, especially with also there's so much that happens in this yeah, movie. Yeah, that's it. What would you say is like, is it a is it an acting performance? Is it like, if you pick a scene, you could pick a song, you could pick a moment or something stylistically this movie does. I okay, I think oh god, that's it's really that's really hard. I honestly can't like specifically, pick, but if the first thing that kind of comes to mind is how they portrayed the multiverse. Mm, no, yeah, I really like that. No, like, and not even just like the multiverse, like when they went, you know, from place like scene to scene or whatever, like between, but like how they portrayed it in the main character's perspective, mm-hmm. like when things would mm-hmm. get split. Mm-hmm. I think that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it was really good about kind of. It was almost like done like magic of where like they're making you pay attention to this one part and then something else happens yeah. on the side you notice. Yeah, like that's I think that's because time travel and like time in general when you mess with that as a as a plot piece can get really messy and then your head focuses on the the clear plot hole and you're like what the hell is making yeah. sense? Yeah. It takes you out of it. This is a really good job of like again doing that magic magic trick of like wait I don't care about the logic because everything's happening too quickly anyways mm-hmm. and. Also, this is really cool. I want to like pay attention yeah. to like. And also, I don't think they made it like. They There's didn't not a make lot it. Of rules they didn't make it. it. Yeah, they didn't yeah. make it difficult. They didn't yeah. make it like. I didn't find myself going like, "Wait, how does that happen? How does that work? Like, that doesn't exactly. make sense." Like, I never That's thought I mean. that in yeah. the entire film, which is so hard to do. And anything. they didn't make it too hard to understand, mm-hmm. like the multiverse, multiverse in this in this particular. Yeah, especially story. with right now with how many places and movies are doing the same yeah. gimmick. It didn't fall into that at all yeah um which i thought was really well done what would be your favorite <laughs> my favorite thing yeah um it's hard to say my favorite part oh, god <laughs> it's so hard i'm torn between it's for me it's the it's the art house cp because it's like anytime they so like this movie's really well known for like the 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 heavy montages of just their faces but anytime they would I didn't care anytime they brought that back and then like almost accelerated on it. Like it was almost like, yeah. Oh, but you're like, oh, see, you're inducing, like it's coming at me. <laughs> like anytime that they did that of like, it's like putting their foot on the gas of something that was already weird and then just going farther. Yeah. That I was like, yeah, like I'm just so excited. <laughs> like someone's actually doing it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And same thing with the goofy moments of like going even, like you see a goofy thing happen, you're like, what the hell? And then, and then they, they, and then push they keep on going. It. They back. Keep, you don't, like, <laughs> like the amount. I want to say something, but I will not say it because I don't want to spoil it. But you know what scene I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, the yeah. amount of times they brought up that scene and they kept, and I'm like, how many times do we need? <laughs> like, it's like, I don't, I don't need it, but I'm enjoying it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I didn't, need, I didn't need you to continue the scene, but I don't hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to say the future answer, like, there's so many things of that that I could keep going back to, but like, even like the googly eyes thing. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. keep coming back to that. Or yeah. any, like the grandfather had a lot of like really funny moments. Yeah. Like, and you you wouldn't, and that's the thing. You wouldn't think that the grandfa- grandfather was going to be so involved. You yeah. just thought it's kind of like something that happens in the beginning that's kind of like pushing the story. Yeah. Like of, you know, the whole generational and yeah, yeah, cultural yeah. stuff. But like, no, he yeah. was pretty present. He had, he had a lot of his own moments. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, and like, a, again, not to be spoilery, but stuff at the end where maybe flight styles changed. And yeah. then, like, the cute, like, just how that's carried, and anytime it's slow almost like, I love the balance between it going really, really, really fast, and then, and then slowing and down. And it just pace it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, my favorite shot in the scene, for anybody who's wondering, uh, it's just one within the theater, where they're on the, the top of the staircase. I, I think I told you, I've literally like this, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's really nice. Oh, my but God. But anytime that, yeah, I guess it's also that play of, like, being really hectic to all of a sudden, like, so peaceful like it's so strange to experience yeah. it more than once in a movie like it kept yeah. happening yes and they weren't scared to sit in moments that were kind of uncomfortable like as a viewer like we spoke about silence at one point like there was a period of silence and you're just like staring <laughs> <laughs> but it was like this is kind of cool this is yeah. nice like yeah. and, and then there was like funny moments and they, they kind of bring back you know like funny moments and then they make you cry and then they go back to something funny and then they go to like action and then it's like yeah so yeah 
I, I really enjoyed it. And I honestly want to, not only so, like, we already talked about the style, you know, like the cinematographers and the, you know, the performance of the cast. And we talked about, like, the storyline, the screenwriters, yeah. everything amazing. And then can we also applaud <laughs> the costume designers? Because, first of all, the amount of costume changes they had. <laughs> and then, like, just the creativity. Like, I have never seen so many different types of costumes in one film. The hands. The, the hands. And, like, just how, how did you think of it? <laughs> Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> also, but also how, like, the colors, and then also, like, the colors and the contrast of the costumes to, like, the actual scene, mm -hmm. like, the setting. It's the so col intense, it's, all of it was very oh, intense, yeah. Whether it contrasted or blended in, or, like, and the lighting, uh, it was yeah. great. There was so was much so practical effects, too, which I really enjoyed, mixed with, obviously, CGI and stuff, special effects. Well, things. yes, yes. But I, I love that. I love that so much of it was going on. Yeah. And with the premise of the movie, like, and it's in the title, with it kind of being about too much, living life that's too much, mm -hmm. hope, having the style also mimic that, like, everything was just as exuberant or hectic, like, I love that. Yes. And then also how they set it up, kind of, like, uh, like, in scenes, like, you know, obviously there's, like, multiple scenes in the film, but, like, in, like, segments where it was, like, part one and then, like, part two. Yeah, the so, like, Yeah, yeah. and it was, it was, I really enjoyed that. And then on top of that, like, can we talk about the deeper meaning to the entire yeah, film? Because, like, this, this movie is already a lot, again, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, there was, like, a very deep and touchy, yeah. like, subject. There are definitely, definitely a bunch of questions being thrown at you to yeah. consider, like, like okay we can talk about the kind of the more surface level ones but it's the idea of like we're starting off with this main character who's very much thinking about their life and how they got to where they are mm -hmm. with their family and it's that the questioning of what if like what if i had done things differently you know w would my life have looked different exactly and so i mean i that's like that's why i'm saying this movie's so relevant it's like who hasn't thought that once exactly. in their life yeah and and i think this movie answers that in like a very peaceful way of like you know it's a kind of gratitude is like the the overall message but like that's like just the one piece and yeah like, and then there's like intergenerational relationships <laughs> yeah, so and like us coming from immigrant families where it's like this is very relevant yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like we experience this ourselves yeah. um there are so many things and i really like i really 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 appreciated the way they portrayed the relationship between the mother and the daughter mm -hmm. um and I, I mean i don't know about you but i think that resonated with like, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, with us like r a lot mm -hmm. um and like just like recognizing that I, again i don't want to give too much away but it's like that re re like relationships are very complex mm -hmm. and um familiar relationships i think are s like probably the most complex relationships mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. because um a lot of the times like there's expectations there's expectations there's and there's also like yeah <laughs> Cultural expectations, that's, that's one thing. But also, like, the idea of family, like, mm -hmm. having to feel like there's a responsibility or something towards someone just because they're family. And obviously, that's not the case for everybody. Like, you know, people have abusive situations and not great relationships with their family, and so, like, they shouldn't have to feel like they have to. Um, or, like, sometimes, you know, like, the elder in the situation, like, a parent can do something wrong to the child, mm -hmm. and then, obviously, the child wants to put distance between the parents but then it's like that cultural guilt well like i'm your parent or whatever it may be or like you have a responsibility towards me right. so i feel like they they represented that pretty well mm. um and also like the idea of living for yourself mm -hmm. they they represent that really well as well mm -hmm. both in the mother and the daughter yeah because and the thing is like it was that's why i'm saying intergenerational intergenerational relationship because we not only saw the dynamic between mother and daughter but we saw dynamic between father and mother with her, you know the, yeah. the grandfather um, and how that changes, but also how intergenerational trauma exists. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. how, like, you know, your relationship with your parents can affect your relationship with your child. Yeah. Thing. So, um, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying that, but it was, it was great. That's what, I mean, that, not, that's what made us cry. Yeah, exactly. Made... <laughs> yeah, I, I talked to Iman after the movie, like, knowing that that was, like, such a big theme, and then also realizing how much of that is present in media right now, like, we're mm -hmm. talking about how trading red is like a very yeah, similar yeah. premise somehow because it is about um, a Chinese uh, family with the same mother and daughter dynamic. Yeah, it's of, like the daughter's of, going through changes yeah. and like is trying to find herself and again like a different age group but like still trying to find yeah. herself in that it, way. And yeah. then the mom wants things kind of like to stay the same and like yeah. having that 
control over your child. And that's intergenerational too. That yeah. movie too. And it's also about, exactly. you know, the, what happens when you're like, yeah, the immigrant lifestyle, like all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to know your thoughts. Why? Like, okay. I guess, I guess I'll give my thoughts. Sure. Like, I think it's like a, a long time coming story. Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. I think this is, I think this story has been brewing and like the minds of young creators for so long that mm-hmm. now those young creators are now in director roles or writer roles who finally have had their own styles, like obviously Training Red and this movie answers it in two very different abstract ways. Mm-hmm. Both like, you know, not incorrect, but like, you know, in, in two different manners. But it's it's just so nice that like, this is almost like the relief, like it's just all happening at once. Like it's already been in every, on everybody's minds. Um, as much as I want to say, like I wish this happened <laughs> earlier when we were younger to like have these messages be out there yeah. for us. Um, but it's, it, it just feels like, yeah, like a long time coming in, like, yeah, I don't think we're going to see a shortage of, um, yeah, like I don't this. think so. I think it's really relevant right now. And, and I think the reason why we didn't see it as much when we were younger is because it's, it is our generation. And like I'm saying, yeah, th- this is our generation. That's kind of like now grown and has experienced that like first generation, um, immigrant children. And like, this is, this is our lives. And it's like, now that we have the voice and the platform to tell stories, like, it's not, you know, uncommon for that to be the, like one of the first things that we talk about because a lot of us resonate with it and we resonate with it cr- like cross culturally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you don't have to be from a specific cultural ethnic background to relate to that kind of story. Mm-hmm. It happens to so many people. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like it just, it makes you reflect. Yeah. And also I think it's important that we see that kind of intergenerational perspective mm-hmm. because at the same time, a lot of times you can sit in your own perspective and you can kind of like be contained in that perspective and sometimes it's it's also good to understand like intergenerational like generational trauma like Mm -hmm. you know you may not understand why your parent treats you like a certain way Mm -hmm. but like seeing it from their perspective helps and like I I mean again this is not a blanket statement of course Mm -hmm. there there are abusive like relationships and things that like you have to cut contact but I think it was nice to see that like we have different perspectives and we're not always going to see eye to eye, but that doesn't mean that you cannot still coexist as a family. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a, yeah, I felt like the, the message, the multiple messages were all very triumphant. It's like, it's a very otherwise positive movie and somehow really feel good. Yeah. And at the end of it, I was like, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> That's true. You know. It's um, like, you took us through a roller coaster, but we made it out alive. Yeah. yeah we're, I feel more reassured about yeah. life than before. <laughs> exactly. Um, to wrap things up, I, I really wanted to talk about knowing that this movie has made such ground for people, I think, in their personal lives, but also, like, artistically. This movie, I think, will set the stage for other movies to come shortly that mm-hmm. we'll look at and go, oh, that's very everything everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be its own style. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am I wanted to talk about what, what we hope this movie will impact in cinema later on. And for me, the, the biggest thing besides the, the bravery to, to have a style like this and to be weird the thing that I think that matters to me the most is how they handled culture in this movie. Mm-hmm. So we talked about it before. But it's just the idea of, like, this movie in multiple ways just showed you Chinese culture without telling you, okay, now we're going to, you know? Like, yeah. Very, like, very educationally, yeah. like, some character all of a sudden, monta- like, you know, monologues <laughs> yeah. about... Yeah, about, like, their culture and, like, exactly. practices. And, and it's so like out of pocket and doesn't fit in, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love that the fighting styles and, like, the multiple ways that they were interacting with each other was through showing, you know, different styles of Kung Fu mm-hmm. and Tai Chi and things like that. And also the the uh, integration of language. They did yeah. that really well, language, too. Yeah, the meta subtitles in this mainstream Yeah, movie, and yeah, I loved yeah. it. Huge. I so loved important. it. So important. Things like that. Costume was a huge thing. There's, there's one um, transition to a fight scene. I don't want to say between two characters, but, like, they're, they're wearing, obviously, very traditional clothes mm-hmm. and the headdresses, like, they change... Uh, Chinese opera is mentioned like it's it's just through like using the 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 I guess they have the opportunity to use the multiverse to show so many costumes and timelines yeah. that they do it in every single way to show culture yeah and it, it and even like right at the start of the movie like they're celebrating Chinese New Year exactly like, there's all there's a whole lot of stuff yeah you know, yeah that, it, that are just happening in the background but like you don't like that's I think that's how it should be treated because this is this is this family's world. This is what's normal to them. Exactly. But at the same time, you're learning about what that world is like without, like it. I've always said this before of like culture. You learn it best when you're just in it, when mm-hmm. you're just experiencing it. Yeah. So I felt this is like just the opening to their to their laundromat to their house, and then you're like absorbing as you see things mm-hmm. happen. 
Um, and like obviously you learn stuff through like how their family through generations treats each other based on like the grandfathers or the moms or the daughters. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just very obvious. So I'm hoping that other movies like since we're in this like diversity era of putting as much, you know, as many people of color on screen on film, I think this is a great example of how to do it. Yeah, I think, yeah, and exactly, exactly what you said, like, I think this allows for more storylines like this to happen, mm -hmm. and, like, unapologetically, you know, like, mm -hmm. you just, you put it out there, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be, like, you don't have to be shy about certain aspects of showing uh, parts of your culture. Um, I think that, like, I really hope that we see, you know, m more diverse stories, mm -hmm. um, and, like, not stories just for the sake of diversity mm -hmm. like this was not that this mm -hmm. was not just for the sake of diversity right it mm -hmm. wasn't like you have like one character and they're like yeah like you said like very educational like this mm -hmm. is my culture and, yeah. and it doesn't really fit in the storyline of the of the film yeah but more like about like stories about people from a culture mm -hmm. and also recognizing that like cultural background like people from a cult uh, ethnic cultural background are not a monolith mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people you know practice whether it be religion or culture practice very differently mm -hmm. they have different practices they have different you know celebrations and like it would be nice to see more stories and you know films about that mm -hmm. um but not that being like front and center but yeah. more like you said in the background in the sense that like you're learning and experiencing as you go but yeah. it's not about them being from that background it's a yeah, it's about exactly. their just their regular yeah, lives yeah. and their experiences and they happen to be from that exactly that's what I was gonna say. and like and and you know my, the first thing that comes to mind is like as muslims um <laughs> and especially as muslim women yeah a lot of times um you know the media portrays us as like it's like the first thing they they talk it's about like muslim is like first and everything after. yeah and yes yeah, <laughs> i am muslim first i, I agree but like <laughs> but it's you're it's, a person but, yeah, yeah like I, I live my life <laughs> You know, like day to day, things happen to me. I'm not me and Razia do not have the same lives just because we're Muslim women who are hijab. Like we have different experiences, we have different cultural backgrounds. You know, like we may practice Islam differently. Like there's so many things that are so different about us. So it's like when you portray a Muslim woman and it's only about like her hijab and taking it off and whatever, you know, gaining freedom or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's like you button, you like you silo that story, you cut it off, and it's like there's so much to know about Muslim people, um, <laughs> right? Like, so, so yeah, anyways, I, I, that was a long-winded way of saying <laughs> that I hope that we see more stories like yeah, this. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's bringing individuality, individuality back into these conversations about culture or yeah. diversity because I think we tend to lose that. Like, even as the, this one depiction of a, of a Chinese mother is not every Chinese mother's Exactly, experience. yeah. And, it, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, and also immigrants' person. experiences are not the same, right? Yeah. Like, I, you, my mom and your mom probably have completely different immigrant experiences, mm -hmm. but they're still both classified as immigrants. So it's like, I really would like to see, like, stories like this, but we, we need to see diversity within the diversity, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody has a different story. And immigrant stories are wild. They are so <laughs> interesting. Like, just they from my own family, I have, yeah. like, five, like, so many different stories that you heard about, like, how people come, you know, whether it be to the States or to, like, or to Canada or whatever, but, like, how they make the trek over here, the reasons why they leave their country. Like, there are so many different stories that you can show. And, like, there is never, and it's never going to end. Like, there are so many stories. There are so many things that you can pull from, like, people. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I think this about wraps up our review yeah. <laughs> of this movie. I I think the summary is, like, please go and go watch, watch this it. movie. Go, go watch the movie, please. Like, please. <laughs> List, look. Look at me. She's telling you right now. Go guys. watch it. <laughs> go watch the movie. It's definitely worth it. Like, go and plus, not even just like, not even don't go watch it online. Like, go support. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is how we continue to get stories like this. Go into the theater, support. You know, diverse cast, diverse movies, and the, if they generate more money, then we the get more works. platforms That's to create good. more stories. That's good. That's good. So. Like that. Put your money. Put your money where your mouth is. It's, she said it. She said what she had to say. Um, but we will catch you on the flip side, guys. If yeah. you want to see more of our uh, episodes, our work, you can catch us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Um, Google. Google that one. The, the, the Google one. Yeah. Like, where you listen to <laughs> Fun podcasts <laughs> on Google. <laughs> You're the one with the Android, uh, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, you can find us on 
Instagram. Yes. Uh, and at Talkaholic Studios, I believe. And yeah. Twitter. Yeah. And amongst other things. But you get it. You know how to use social media. Yes. I believe in you. Yeah. Um, can... But, <laughs> sorry. No. <laughs> but until next time, guys. Yes, we'll talk to you guys another time. Bye. Bye.